Imperial ships in the world of Warhammer 40k travel via two fundamentally different modes. Firstly, within real space, they travel with the help of the plasma engines that cover interplanetary and sometimes short interstellar trips, while plasma engines provide raw forward thrust, with heavy thrusters, also called reaction thrusters, are used for course adjustments, turning orbital insertion, station keeping and even lifting off from planets. These are mounted along the flanks, pro, stern and the keel of the vessel and they often work in coordinated firing patterns to rotate the ship or shift its trajectory. Then for longer distances, warp drives are utilized which takes them through the sea of souls, the immaterium, and they exit that space at a manifold point to a system multiple light years away although the time taken to do so would vary tremendously. But for the sake of this video, let us only focus on the plasma drive which lets the ships travel in real space and how fast can go. So the plasma drive or engines is a form of Newtonian reaction drive which means it propels a vessel by expelling a mass from behind, in this case a superheated plasma in one direction to generate thrust in the opposite direction, which is still in accordance with Newton's third law of motion. This drive is powered by the ship's fusion-based plasma reactors which generate immense amounts of energy by fusing hydrogen isotopes or maybe other similar fuels. The resulting plasma, a superheated, electrically charged state of matter, is then accelerated and channeled through internal magnetic fields and expelled from the engine housings at extremely high speeds. This creates a powerful directed thrust that can move even massive kilometer long ships through rail space at significantly great speeds depending on the duration of thrust. Plasma drives are not designed for faster than light travel, instead they are used for in-system travel such as moving between planets, moons or orbital stations. Compared to the far more dangerous and unpredictable warp drives, plasma drives are considered ancient, stable and reliable, a refined relic of humanity's scientific golden age, the dark age of technology. These drives are enormous, sometimes larger than entire hive city districts and must be continuously maintained to avoid catastrophic failure, which involves chants, sacred oils and tech priests tending to the machine spirits in a semi-religious fashion. So the speed at which an imperial starship travels in real space using its plasma drives is determined by several interrelated factors, all influenced by the sheer scale, mass and ancient design of these vast void-faring vessels. Chief among these is acceleration, which directly depends on the thrust to weight ratio that is the amount of propulsive force the ship's plasma drives can generate relative to its enormous mass. Imperial ships, especially cruisers and battleships are vast with some spanning several kilometers in length and weighing tens of millions of tons. And so even with the immense plasma thrust, their acceleration would be slow and steady rather than rapid or agile. Also the duration of sustained engine thrust would play a crucial role because these ships are in the vacuum of space where there is no atmospheric drag. Therefore, a continuous thrust over a long period of time without emptying the fuel will allow them to gradually build up significant velocity, even approaching a meaningful fraction of the speed of light in interplanetary journeys. The size, as and tonnage of the vessel drastically affects how quickly it can accelerate. A salt class frigate or a cobra class destroyer, for example, being relatively lighter and smaller, can build up speed and maneuver faster than massive ships like the emperor class battleships or the retribution class warships which moves like ponderous cities in space. Moreover, the structural design would also matter a lot as older or poorly maintained ships may not be able to withstand the high Gs of acceleration due to stress on the hull and maybe the internal systems. So while many depictions in lore lean heavily into gothic grandeur and vague technical mysticism, several notable examples from the Horus Heresy novels and other sources provide explicit references to speed, acceleration and travel times revealing that these ancient ships, though ponderous, are capable of near-relativistic performance under right conditions. One of the most striking examples appears in the Flight of the Eisenstein, where the phalanx, the massive fortress monastery of the Imperial Fist, emerges from the warp after rescuing Nathaniel Garrow and the ship Eisenstein that was trapped in the warp exits at the outer reaches of the solar system, somewhere near or slightly within the Kuiper Belt, which are several dozen astronomical units from Terra and then proceeds inwards at 3 quarters of the speed of light, which is 0.75c or in simple terms, 75% the speed of light, which translates into 809 million kilometers per hour or 502 million miles per hour. This speed is achieved 
with its drives flaring like captured stars, showing both the enormous power of its plasma engines and the massive acceleration capabilities of even tremendous ships when operating over extended timescales in the vacuum of the void or deep space. And also that a black ship, which is much smaller, which was in the same story, was able to join the phalanx from Neptune's orbit, which thus implies that many warships have a similar rapid acceleration or even more. Another concrete example is the Cobra class destroyer called the Fallon Hope, which was described as being extensively modified but still using standard Imperial plasma drive technology. It was seen to have sustained a maximum acceleration of 7.6 Gs, which means approximately 76 meters per second square. Using this constant acceleration, it is possible to calculate its velocity over time. After just one second, it would be traveling over 170 miles per hour and within a minute, it will reach approximately 3 miles per second. Over the course of an hour, it will grow to 180 miles per second and by the end of the day, it would be traveling at 4320 miles per second. After a full month of continuous acceleration, given that it has enough fuel, the Fallon Hope would be moving at over 120,000 miles per second or roughly two-thirds the speed of light. This shows that in the frictionless vacuum of space with no opposing forces, having sustained acceleration can result in extraordinary speeds, like a slow and steady wins the race kind of thing. But obviously here, with a fantastical amount of fuel that would in reality outweigh the mass of the vessel. These lighter and more maneuverable vessels like destroyers can attain these speeds relatively quickly, while larger capital ships require months of sustained thrust to match them. However, not all ships accelerate equally. Heavier ships such as the Exorcist class Grand Cruiser, the Belisarius with a mass of 37 megatons, have much lower acceleration speeds due to their immense mass and structural limitations. The Belisarius can achieve roughly 0 to 45 miles per hour in one second, which translates to about 20 meters per second square, significantly lesser than the Fall on Hope. As a result, it would take 4 to 5 months of uninterrupted thrust for such a grand cruiser to reach the kind of speeds achieved by lighter ships within a few weeks. Even slower is the Hagia Sophia, a supermassive void ship weighing 60 megatons, capable of only 10 miles per hour per second or 4.5 meters per second square, making relativistic speed nearly impossible to reach even after a year of continuous burn. And then realistically, some narratives such as planetary vessels traveling from Terra to Mars in a day presents a challenge to reconcile with, you know, relativistic acceleration. Mars lies around 0.5 astronomical units or 75 million kilometers from Earth or Terra, and to traverse the distances in 24 hours, the ship would need to travel at an average speed of 3125 kilometers per second, or just over 1% the speed of light. Even assuming constant acceleration and deacceleration phases, such a journey would require sustained thrust in the range of 3 to 5 Gs, which is only achievable for smaller vessels like the shuttles or corvettes, and thus traveling from Terra to Mars by large warships might take several days. So these figures are consistent with what we might expect from high-end military vessels of 40k when they are executing a strategic burn across the solar system. And in contrast during space combat, where agility and rapid turn shifts or maneuvers matter more than top speed, ships operate under more conservative thrust settings. Here we have combat turns in the Battlefleet Gothic system representing 30 minute intervals, during which a typical mid-sized vessel or a ship might cover 110,000 kilometers, translating to a combat speed of roughly 34,000 miles per hour or 15 kilometers per second, which might be a far cry from interplanetary velocities which are seen earlier, but they might be more practical for engagements within orbital ranges or asteroid fields and between different ships of equal uh, power and sizes. But as you can see earlier, based from what we know from lore, an average Imperial warship using plasma drives can reach speeds of up to 0.75c, which means three-fourths the speed of light, 75% the speed of light, under the ideal thrust conditions in real space that is although reaching that velocity could take days or weeks due to gradual acceleration. Civilian void ships with weaker or less efficient plasma drives tend to cap out at around 0.5c, which is 50% of the speed of light, which is still very impressive. But compared to other races, the Imperium's rail space velocity of warships places it somewhere in the middle tier list. Orc ships, while seemingly ramshackle, are often slower than Imperial vessels, but they become faster if the Orcs believe they are due to the psychic gestalt field they 
unconsciously generate. Eldar ships are vastly superior in both speed and maneuverability, often impossible to catch by Imperial warships. The Necron ships operate on technologies that break conventional understanding of motion as they phase, blink, blink and bend time-space, making them functionally instantaneous over vast distances. The Imperial vessels might outpace the Tyranids, but the Tau would present another case. They would have faster ships even though they are a far younger race. But they are very scientific and they progress faster because they haven't tasted AI Rebellion yet. But what they do lack are psychers and access to the warp, something that the Imperium enjoys over them. Now as a bonus, let's take a look at warp travel which is infamously unpredictable and full of risks and dangers. Here the Rogue Trader role-playing game provides one of the only structured semi-consistent tables for warp travel times across Imperial space. While this is still subject to variations and debate across the lore, this gives us a rare lore supported sense of how fast ships might move across the galaxy when using the warp. So one day travel time would result in short trips between two nearby systems along stable well charted warp corridors. This might occur within the same planetary system cluster. Five to ten days travel time for journeys within the same subsector, typically a few dozen light years apart, assuming accurate charts and little warp disturbances. So for a month or two months time, you can cross the entire sector. For more than a hundred days, you would cross the entire segmentum which may be several thousand light years across, and maybe even several years for long haul journeys or voyages across the entire galaxy, especially if you're avoiding warp storms which can happen quite consistently. And so with that we come to the end of this video. If you like this one then watch this other one too, the one in the end screens and do hit the like button for support. Also smash that subscribe button to be a part of Legio Nutbug. Till the next time, take care boys.